Hello there guys, Francis Greer here and welcome back to part 3 of the Medusa bust build from Rebel Resin. Okay guys, so welcome back to part 3 of this uh, Medusa bust build. So part 1 and part 2 are online, the, uh, there will be links to those in the description bar below. Uh, in part 1 we basically got the kit in its resin kit form, we cleaned it up, there was quite a lot of bad seams, there was quite a lot of air holes, there was certain parts that just didn't form well in the mould. Uh, so there was quite a lot of work uh, put on this. Uh, the second video was adapting more of that but with uh, more key parts in place. Uh, there's quite a lot of gluing in that video, uh, attaching the arms in place and filling the seams, attaching the bow etc. Uh, and the main key point was uh, scratch building and much better uh, quiver and, uh, and arrows as well. So the original version was really thin and really flimsy, it just wasn't very good at all, you wouldn't get any arrows uh, in there, uh, or not many anyway. Uh, so yeah, so uh, with part 3, what to look forward to? Okay, well the main bust is, uh, is put together, so we need to crack on with painting it. So there's different key parts that will be painted in different ways. Uh, this is a private commission, so I'm, I, I have to basically paint this up how the client wants me to paint this up. Uh, he has an ongoing uh, Ray Harryhausen, you know, uh, stop motion uh, clay uh, collection going on, and all his previous pieces were all painted with this metallic kind of tone, so they're all kind of bronze in in in, in nature. But they had like deep set colours that lended off from the copper or from the bronze. So yeah, so this is uh, what I need to create in this uh, on the, in this on this bus. I need to create the same kind of paint style. Uh, so yeah, so we can probably start with a copper bronze undercoat. Okay guys, so as you can see there, Medusa's been given a base coat of bronze, so she's looking uh, very metallic at the moment. So the plan is, uh, we're going to have to start adding some darker tones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, water up some uh, acrylic black, and then we're going uh, to slap it on, and then we're going to wipe off the excess, and then all the little bumps and lumps and all the little nooks and crannies uh, black's going to accumulate in all those areas uh, before I go ahead and I start adding it all to the main figure I'm going to do what I've just said to the uh, to the back quiver and then if there's any reactions to the metallic paint then it'll be easier to fix on this than it would be to fix on on the main bust of Medusa so I'm going to do the black on this and then we'll see how we get on. Okay guys, so I've got my main parts ready to go and I've gone ahead and I've used an old recyclable tub with some uh, acrylic black uh, watered down. So we're just going to put it on and then I'm going to wipe off the excess with some uh, kitchen towel.
Okay guys, so we'll just go ahead and we'll put this to one side to dry. Okay guys, so now that we've got Medusa drying, uh, now's probably a good opportunity to start painting this guy. So I'm thinking that he's going to be the only part that's not got a metallic tone to it. Uh, obviously he's turned to stone, which is kind of a unnatural process, so I kind of wanted that to stand out, so in effect he stands out. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to go in with a dark grey, this is uh, barely black from Wilco's, uh, basically just give it an undercoat and uh, yeah, and then lighten it up and make them look like stone. Okay guys, so as you can see there, that the black wash has actually brought out a lot of detail on the juicer. So the next part is uh, just start adding some uh, base colours. So I'm going to start with uh, adding some white. So I'll be adding white to the eyes, the teeth and then to the bow. And then uh, once that is uh, dry, I'll go over it with uh, pearl effect. Okay guys, so for the next part we're going to go ahead and we're going to spray paint the shield. So obviously with this uh, being uh, more of a gold colour, I'm going to go ahead with the gold spray paint. Okay guys, as you can see there, the whites have been done, so I can go ahead and I can uh, add like a pearlescent effect to that soon, but before I go ahead and do that, I want to give a dry brush of, uh, of a lighter tone of copper. So the uh, copper I'm going to be using is, uh, is just regular artist copper from Wilkinson's.
Okay guys, so I went ahead and I mixed up a bunch of metallic colours uh, to basically get this uh, like, a, like a dark green colour. So obviously this is going to be a skin. So, uh, so yeah, so the plan is, obviously I've got to keep the front part copper, uh, but then it blends off into uh, this, this uh, metallic green colour. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start adding it to the back and then we're going to lightly try and blend it out around the sides. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go ahead with some uh, Flintstone medium grey uh, and I'm going to dry brush the victim basically just to try and bring up some of those highlights and make them resemble stone. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in with some mushroom brown as a basic highlight. Okay guys, so I'd go ahead and I'd say that he looks like uh, stone now. Uh, for the next part, I'll probably go ahead and I'll uh, do a bit more work on the helmet. Okay guys, so for the next part, I want to go ahead and I want to add a few of these to the bottom of the base. Basically just to help raise this up a little bit, which will help protect the paint job underneath. And, uh, and basically just to try and... Uh, house it a little bit better so it's not going to be prone to getting uh, cuts and scratches everywhere okay guys so here is Medusa at the moment so she has this uh, a highlight of uh, of like a medium metallic green. Now I went ahead and I added more layers to the actual some of the snakes, not all of them because they're different colours. So I wanted a, a one on this arm, uh, obviously the main focal point on the back of the head, and then this side tail, uh, which leads to this uh, this snake here. Uh, I also went ahead and added. Uh, it's like a stone effect to uh, the victim so obviously he's going to be uh, put there in place so that's going to look cool once done uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a bit of red to the top of this helmet and then I might mucky up the uh, the rest of the helmet uh, to make it like look a bit worn so I'll just put it on one side at the moment so yeah, so nothing else to say really, just uh, suppose crack on with the paint job.
Okay guys, so for the next part I went ahead and I mixed up some uh, some green and some uh, some very co like coppers and silvers to make this like metallic-y green. So we're going to use this for our main uh, skin tone. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I mixed a bunch of copper acrylic and a little bit of gold acrylic in an old uh, ketchup bottle uh, and it's made this like shade that's in between so it's not quite vibrant gold and it's not like a dark uh, copper so you can see there's a bit of a difference between the two of them so this will work great as uh, adding some highlights to some of the parts So for the next part I went ahead and I mixed some copper with some dark brown to make a metallic dark brown. Okay guys, so for the next part we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, add some pins uh, to keep this uh, victim in place. So he's going to get a little bit of glue here, put in place, and there's going to be a pin dropped in here, and there's going to be a pin dropped in here, attaching to the column. Uh, before I go ahead and do that, I want to go ahead and I want to uh, add a little bit of metallic red to this part here of the helmet where the feathers would be. Uh, I'm just going to use a, a, a nice metallic rich dark red uh, nail polish for that. Okay guys, so that's where the drill pin channels are, so there's a tiny little bit protruding here, so I'll get the grinder on that and grind that off, and uh, this one seems to sit flush, that's fine, but it has left a little bit of a, a bad seam line there, so that'll have to be filled in as well, so yeah, all fun and games, uh, so now, so for the next part, I suppose I should uh, sort this out. Okay, so we're going to use a tiny bit of wood filler to fill in some of these uh, these little holes. So we'll come come back in there. Uh, paint over these later on
Okay guys, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave this to dry and then we'll uh, probably give it a little bit of a light, light sand with a nail file and then we'll uh, paint over it. Okay guys, so while that's drying, we'll go ahead and we'll start work on the shield. So, in the instructions, or on the photo on the instructions, uh, the shield uh, seems to have a white undercoat and then black painted over the top. So, that, I think that's what we're going to do. Basically, we're just going to coat this, uh, this bull, or this bull's head, in white leave it to dry or we might give it multiple coats and then we'll go ahead and paint the, bra uh, the black after. to dry and then we'll give it a second coat. Okay guys so I went ahead and I added two coats of acrylic white uh, to lighten up the white parts of the uh, of the bull's head. Uh, because we've gone ahead and we've been using like a pearl effect for the whites uh, it's probably a good idea that I do the same on this. So uh, same again just a uh, uh, pearlescent uh, nail varnish to the rescue. Okay guys, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to dry and then we can uh, start applying the blacks. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start lighting up this uh, trim. So I'm going to paint this uh, coppery gold and then I might give it a, a quick uh, once over with uh, a, a more pure gold. sanded this, uh, this seam so that's nicely filled in now. I've also brushed away all the dust and the, the rubbish because obviously you don't want that to uh, impact on the uh, when you're applying the paint. So yeah so uh, if, I need to recover this, repaint this, I need to touch up where the pins are, paint over them to uh, mimic the same stone effect uh, and then I'm thinking about just going around and just uh, trying to uh, enrich some of the colours here and there.
Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in and I'm going to lightly dry brush some of this. It's titled Light Brass uh, from Model Metallics, uh, but if you look at it, it's more of a goldish colour I suppose, like a dirty gold. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry brush that on this snake belly part of Medusa. Uh, two reasons. Uh, the first one is in the film this is like a yellowish light brownish colour uh, which is totally separate from the greens. So basically it separates hair from a torso to a, a snake belly. Uh, and also I want to add a, a different colour tone so it's not the same brass uh, copper as the base. So basically it separates the two halves. Okay guys, so for the next part I want to go ahead and I want to add some uh, more detail to the eyes, basically like the black areas. Uh, with with that I'm just going to use regular uh, black acrylic and I'm going to use a very fine paintbrush. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I quickly give a quick blast of matte spray paint uh, varnish to both sides of the shield, uh, basically just to uh, protect the paint job underneath. Uh, as you can tell, the shield still looks a little bit too uh, clean or a little bit too on the new side. So if this is supposed to have been in Medusa's layer for, uh, well, who knows how long, uh, obviously it would have accumulated dirt, dust and, and uh, yeah, all grime I suppose. So yeah, so basically now that I've sealed it I'm going to go over with uh, that uh, watered down black wash and then wipe off the excess. Okay guys, so I'll go ahead and I'll leave this to dry and then uh, hopefully soon we can add it to the base. Okay guys, so for the next part, uh, there's little individual uh, parts that in between the snakes. Now in the movie, uh, this is like kind of, I suppose like a, like a gingery, orangey kind of colour to her hair. So I thought I would uh, try to recreate that 
but instead of having an orange because I think that would clash too uh, too much with the paint palette uh, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna uh, lightly give a coating with uh, just just some regular copper uh, from the airbrush paints. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in with the airbrush and I'm going to lightly add some shadings with some black. So now that uh, the quiver's finished, uh, it's probably a good idea to now glue it in place. So I'm just going to use regular super glue for that. Okay guys, I think that looks pretty cool, so we'll just leave that to dry. Okay guys, so for the next part I want to go in and I want to add some more highlight colours to the snakes. Uh, basically once we've put some highlights in with the airbrush, uh, from a distance it looks, it looks fine, but when you get up close you can tell that uh, it's, it's not in high definition so to speak. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to go over some of the some of the main key parts again, just to basically highlight uh, the yeah, the pan.
Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in with uh, some of this, which is uh, which is just regular gold airbrush paint and I'm going to uh, paint uh, fingernails and add a couple of highlights to the snake heads. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to lightly dry brush uh, some more light copper just to add some highlights. Okay guys, so now that the main key parts are more or less fully painted, uh, now is probably a good opportunity to go ahead and uh, epoxy resin glue Medusa to the, uh, to the inside uh, peg and, uh, and then any excess parts that is left over I might just uh, lightly brush on the edge of the shield and put the shield in place. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I added some more black to the black part of the snakes. Uh, basically just to give it a bit more of a, a, a definition, I suppose. Uh, but uh, as you can see there, that uh, the same pattern on multiple multiple snakes of different colours uh, all looks a little bit too samey. So now that I've got a black under undertone, uh, I'm going to go back over uh, the snake, some of the snakes with the basic base colour. So it goes over, so it gives the impression of like a, a pattern to the skin that's kind of like. Uh, like under the skin line, I suppose. Uh, so it's not it's not as much in your face, you know. They've all got the same pattern. So yeah, so it just mixes it up a little bit. So yeah, so I'll crack on with that.
Okay guys, so for the next part I want to go ahead and I want to add some uh, matte varnish to the stone part of the victim. Uh, the rest of the piece I'm thinking about coating in gloss varnish just to give it a bit more of a sheen or a bit more of a reflective surface to it. Uh, really bring out those metallics. Uh, but uh, obviously stone uh, is going to be the opposite, it's not going to stand out and it's not metallic. So yeah, so this guy is going to get a coating of uh, some clear matte varnish. Okay guys, so I think that's him done, let's leave him to dry. Okay guys, so like yesterday we give this guy a matte varnish uh, to the stone part of his skin. Uh, today we're going to go ahead with some clear gloss varnish uh, to all the rest of the piece. Basically it just helps highlight all the metallics, make it look a bit more metal in nature and then obviously just gives a nice overall sheen to the full piece. So yeah, so the full thing's going to get covered apart from the victim's skin. Okay guys, so I'll go ahead and I'll leave that coat to dry and then I'll go over and I might just touch up a few little areas that I probably had to get to like under her arm and under the quiver and whatnot. And then uh, for the most part, I think she's finished. Okay guys, so Medusa's now been covered all over with uh, varnish, both uh, uh, gloss and a little bit of matte there on the victim. Uh, the last step now is to just add a string to the bow. So I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, just normal uh, string for that. Uh, I decided to go with like a greyish colour. I didn't want it to be bright white. I didn't want it to look too clean. So I thought uh, more of a grey, greyish mushroom grey uh, might work better. So yeah, so how I'm going to apply this, I'm just basically just going to wrap it around the top a few times, put some glue on it, and then stretch it down, and then do the other side. Okay, so now that those have had a bit of super glue on either end, I'm just going to get a tiny bit of PVA glue on my finger and then just go over the bit that we've wrapped around, basically just to give it a little bit more stability. Okay, and I think she's finished.
Okay guys, so that's uh, Medusa finished. Uh, if you like this build, please click the like button and share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps new people find my channel, which I'm always appreciative of. Thank you very much. Uh, I've had a blast making this one. Uh, like I said before, this is my favourite movie monster, so this was a uh, this was a really fun project for me. Uh, so yeah, so please check out my other videos for other model kit builds and statue reviews and modelling tips and basically all the cool stuff that life has to bring. And uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you very much and goodbye.